Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go over some of the Delve balance changes. Now this isn't the full patch notes. In fact, I'm actually really happy that Path of Exile did this, um, or GDG. What they did is they made a development manifesto highlighting uh, the big balance changes, as you can see here. Um, so this is going to be really cool because instead of me making a 45 minute video reading through an hour long of patch notes, I know that doesn't make sense, um, I can go ahead and outline these and then tomorrow I'll probably go ahead live stream and um, make a video covering the passive tree changes, which I think are, you know, that's what I'm really excited for. So um, these are the big balance changes. It's not going to be that too, too long of a video. It's just, you know, like a couple sentences. So let's go ahead and start. So one thing to note is I didn't play too much of Incursion, so I'm really excited to read through a couple of these. And if you guys have been reading or following along with what they're actually doing with their game development, um, then you'll know that half of these are already basically like answered. Uh, so, or you've already seen them. Uh, Delve balance changes. Also, for those of you guys who don't know, Delve will be coming out in two days. Three days. So two days, 23 hours, four minutes, and 34 seconds. All right. Uh, traps. So traps had a huge buff. I don't know if it was if it was Incursion League or the league before. I think it was Incursion League. Um, basically, uh, they were pretty crazy. So let's go ahead and read. Traps and, to a much lesser extent, mines on certain skills were more powerful than we were comfortable with. <clears throat> Glacial Cascade mines and arc traps. Um, invalidating other ways of using many skills. We've increased the throw time on traps, feels bad, and the damage penalty on multi-traps, it's okay, I usually use cluster trap, and minefield support, while lowering the number of traps thrown by cluster trap, fuck my life, uh, we'll also be increasing the damage of trap and mine skills like lightning trap and fire nova mine to compensate. So that's cool. They're basically making it so the actual trap and mine skills, or maybe these two specifically, are stronger and less effect to like, you know, arc and glacial cascade like standard skills uh instant skills we've changed what it means to be instant to mean the skill can be used while performing other actions they can't be used while you're unable to take any action like when you're stunned or frozen we've made a large number of effects instant mostly buff effects most of these are reservation effects to make applying your auras and heralds faster we've also applied this to molten shell phase run blood rage convocation and righteous fire now, I cannot fucking state how happy I am that Phase Run is in here. So I played Death's Oath for quite a long time, I'm sure you guys are aware, and one of the most annoying things is doing this on a character, right? As you're running through your map, you're running, you're running, you're running, you go, wait a minute. Whoosh. Okay, run, run, run. Whoosh. Run, run, run. Whoosh. So now it's gonna be instant. You can run while going like this, so that's really cool. Uh, and that's mainly like a big quality of life buff and I oh, did my webcam die? Oh, there we go That's mainly like a really big quality of life buff and you got to understand that when you're smashing through these maps in two minutes Constantly going your mobility skill is like the most important thing in the world for you. So having this is super super nice Most of these have been otherwise untouched other than adding a short cooldown only molten shell was increased in monocost at lower levels will be monitoring these skills and being mindful of adding future in oh future instant skills so that they need to be timed well uh, rather than using them every time they're off cooldown. Spell block. This is a big one. Uh, we've changed how spell block is gained, so it's only available from flat sources of spell block. All existing sources of attack block to spell block conversion have been changed to a flat source of spell block. That means that pretty much everything that had convert, well, basically, as they said, Southwell's Frame, Rainbow Strides, uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, and we've added spell block to more places in the passive tree with higher values than were previously available. That's good. The Gladiator passive skill now uses your attack block as your skill block. Oh, this change was made particularly to remove some restrictions that impacted design but also to let spell block be something all characters can have access to rather than being very powerful for very high block characters and weaker for other characters. This is really interesting. Uh, movement skills. Movement skills, oh, we were talking about this earlier, are a core part, of, uh, core part of gameplay in Path of Exile for both survivability and efficiency. We've tried to reduce some of the disparity between the different movement skills so builds have different choices on how to approach their mobility. This is just a first step. Remember, just the first step, just the tip, boys and girls. Um, we intend to make further changes incrementally over time without destroying the feeling of mastery that their speed grants. 
Now, one big thing to note before I explain further, I think part of what they're addressing is here is like basically Flame Dash and Lightning Warp versus Shield Charge and Whirling Blades. Um, Flame Dash has charges, Lightning Warp requires cast time, Shield Charge used to scale off movement speed and attack speed. So here we go. The movement speed portion of Shield Charge no, is no longer affected by local weapon speed modifiers on weapons. The total weapon attack time will still affect the build, uh, the build up and end animations of the skill, but your travel time will only be impacted by movement speed and global attack speed. This makes using certain weapons called Bright Beak, aw no dude, far less powerful with the skill, flattening the playing field when it comes to what weapons to use. We'll be further reviewing the effect of attack speed on the skill in the future, but for now we're just adjusting this one aspect of the skill. This is actually a really good change and I want to explain why really shortly. The big problem with stuff like Bright Beak that gives 50% attack speed and like, you know, total resistance is you have to do the trade-off of mobility versus, um, versus survivability or, you know, defenses or uh, offense capability or whatever. But the problem is that sometimes the clear speed meta is a little bit too silly, right? Same, it's kind of like magic finding, right? Um, so I, I don't know, I'm just personally happy to see them really addressing this and saying, hey man, we don't want to destroy the build customization, you know? Like, just because you crafted this weapon and it didn't roll an attack speed roll, we don't want to stop you from using it. So I, I'm really happy that they're addressing it. I think that's a smart way to do it. Flame Dash and Lightning Warp. Flame Dash and Lightning Warp are the two primary caster-based travel skills, and they have fallen behind the effectiveness of Leap Slam, Shield Charge, and Whirling Blades. We're shortening the cooldown on Flame Dash, lowering its cast time slightly, and increasing the range! Yes! It can travel to be more consistent with other skills. It also gains cooldown recovery rate as the gem levels. Lightning Warp now has a shorter cast time and starts with 20% reduced duration at level 1, scaling slower as it levels. This is so the skill doesn't feel as bad when used at lower levels. Sunder. So now we're on the skill balance. Sunder is a very powerful leveling tool that provides strong damage and great clap. By the way, when they say leveling, they mean up to level 100. Um, and great crowd clearing from a safe distance. We've left the damage intact, but we've lowered the length of the rectangular damage area by 20%. Sorry, Sunderboy. Kinetic Blast has had some mechanical quirks that made it very powerful at area clearing and situationally powerful in some boss encounters. The skill now deals 35% less area damage from what was previously 25%. We've also changed how the areas are placed. They can now be placed in slices around the central impact so that they can't overlap again. Oh, oh, they can't overlap against walls. Some won't be able to spawn at all. Wow. They did not like the kinetic blast cheesing. Oh man. Used to maybe basically like either sit by a wall and just hug and kinetic blast and do like 74 times damage. Or you use like barrage and just push them into the wall. To be fair though, it's it's still okay. They just want you to use single target along with kinetic blast. So I think that's totally totally fine. Considering you can literally clear maps with like a white weapon with kinetic blast, you know the single target. You may have to use something else, but I think that's totally justified. Uh, Vol soul gain prevention time. We've now changed all vol skills that are affected by duration modifiers to have their soul prevention time also affected by duration modifiers. This means that when increasing the duration of Vol Haste's effect, you're increasing the soul's prevention time? This keeps certain skills that could get very long durations from being recharged during prevention time, and is beneficial for effects like Vol Stormcall and Vol Earthquake that would al likely already have duration reductions. Hmm. That's really cool. That's really cool. That means if you have reduced duration, it's the exact same effect. Vol Righteous Fire. Vol Righteous Fire now takes the combined life and energy um, energy shield sacrificed from energy shield before life to better support low life characters using Vol Righteous Fire. Uh, earthquake and Vol Earthquake, the aftershock damage multiplied is now consistent at all levels. Some values, wait, the same value it was at gem level 20. This is to make the skill better to use while leveling before you've had opportunities to invest into it. Physical Projectile Attack Damage The Physical Projectile Attack Damage support has been renamed to Vicious Projectile Support, increasing its readability <laughs> uh, by 70%. It now grants more chaos and more physical damage to supported attacks instead of Poison and Bleed, letting it apply to damage over time from Caustic Arrow and Toxic Rain. Uh, passive Tree Changes We've adjusted a large number of minion passives, added new starting minion paths, 
for Witch and Templar, added a new large minion wheel above the Templar's elemental wheel, as well as reworking the minion clusters near the Templar starting area. These include effects that increase that let oh that let increases and reductions to minion damage also apply to you. Wait, are they putting the Necromancer Keystone on? Like, or no, that's Scourge. That's Scourge. That's right. Interesting. Uh, and the same for minion attack speed. He's also included a number of minion accuracy increases. I wonder how that's going to work. That's pretty cool. I wonder if minion speed, when transferred over to you, if that, wait, let me see that. Increases and reductions of minion damage also apply to you. And the same for minion attack speed. I wonder if you take minion attack speed and convert it over to you, is it considered global attack speed? It would be because it's not local, so it should affect things like shield charge. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Um, include a number, minion accuracy. Oh, minion accuracy is really big. The Templar starting area has been significantly reworked, improving bonuses as well as pathing, pathing, and better enabling the minion attack hybrid. Okay, cool. The Witch starting area now has a minion path replacing its existing mana and mana regen path. The mana skills have been moved to a path alongside the energy shield path with a new mana notable that grants increased mana, flat mana regener- Oh my god, it gives flat mana on the passive tree? That's cool. Uh, the Guardian no longer has a notable that affects war cries. We've taken these bonuses and placed them on the passive tree. One cluster between the Templar and Marauder grants you and your allies attack, cast, and movement speed if you used a Warcry recently, uh, removes the Warcry mana cost, as well as some other small bonuses. The other cluster between the Marauder and Duelist make Warcry's instant, lowers their cooldown slightly, as well as other minor bonuses. Very cool. Not locking them behind Ascendancies. This is a, such a great idea, as basically taking underused things from the Ascendancy and putting it on the passive tree to make it more valued. The Guardian Ascendancy. The Guardian now has two new notable skills <clears throat> that reward having minions while being directly involved in combat, as well as empowering the Herald of Purity skill. This is really seeming like a uh, like a dominating blow setup. The Pathfinder Ascendancy. The Pathfinder now has four skill paths, replacing its previous two skill poison paths. This path includes more potent poison bonuses, chaos attack damage bonuses, general, I think we saw this in the previous video, general's chaos skill effects, and a new bonus for Herald of Agony it is intended to work well alongside the new Chaos Bow skills, as well as any Poison Attack character. Bow passives now affect skill damage over time. Previously, almost all weapon passives gave damage from ailments with attack skills while wielding a weapon of their type. Now they grant bonus to damage over time instead, letting them boost the damage of Caustic Arrow, Toxic Rain, and Decay. Uh, secondary damage. Sources of secondary damage like Corpse Explosion or the Blast from Explosive Arrow can now be blocked or dodged. Oh, you can't evade them, but you can block and dodge. That puts Rumi's back up there. Not really, but maybe I love Rumi's. The block and dodge type required is based on the source of the secondary damage. This is to make Explosive Arrow easier to PvP, but also prevent certain monster abilities like Corpse Destruction. Bypassing defense or blocked or dot. Wait a minute. Wait, monsters don't use Corpse Explosion, monsters use Corpse Destruction, so it's not nerfed? Sources of secondary damage, like Corpse Explosions. Huh, I don't exactly understand what that means, I'll have to figure that out. Frost Bomb. Frost Bomb, in addition to reducing life regeneration rate, also reduces energy shield regeneration and recovery rate. This is to let players have ways to mitigate very defensive energy shield characters, which may also come in handy against certain grandmasters. Interesting. I like this so far. I'm pr I'm pretty excited. I'm actually really excited to read the patch notes now. After like basically reading this, I'd like to see like the fine tune uh, detailing in between it. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if this alters or changes anything that you wanted to play, or if this gives you an idea of something maybe that you do want to play. Uh, in the comments below. But anyway, like I said, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I also just set up a schedule, so I'll be streaming live every day at, I think, 9 o'clock central time. So you can always find me there. Anyway, I will see you guys all later. Have a great time, everyone. And I guess I'll see you in Delft.